Hello everyone, welcome to this Cypress tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be learning about the hooks in Cypress. So let's begin. In Cypress are borrowed from the Mocha framework and these hooks are really helpful when you need to set some conditions which you want to run before a set of tests or before each test. And once you run those tests or set of tests, you need to clean up those conditions. So this is here hooks comes in and these hooks will do exactly the same in Cypress. Now there are four hooks in the Cypress. The first one is before each, then we have before, then we have after each and then in the last we have after. So before each will be used when we need to run any condition or test or maybe some configuration which we need to run before uh, each test, then we would be using the before each. And it will run against each test in your Cypress. Then we have a before. So if you want to set up something, for example, if you want to set up your database, because in most of the cases when we are working with the automation, we need to connect with the database, maybe for inserting the data, maybe for setting up some configurations maybe for removing some data right so in those cases such kind of a setups needs to be done in the before and it will execute only once then we have a after each it will work in a very similar way just like a before each and here after each will execute after every test and in the end we have a after so it's just like if you have set up something, configuration, any kind of database connection, something like that, and you want to remove that condition, you want to, you don't need that configuration anymore, you want to close that database connection, then after is your place. So after will be executed once only in the Cypress, right? Now let's see how these hooks should be used and what should be the sequence of usage here. So here, Let's go to the next slide here. So here we have a very simple explanation. So first you need to use the before, which will execute once at the first level. Then you should use before each. And this before each condition will be executed against both these tests, okay? So the execution sequence would be before, then before each, then test one, then after each, then again before, then this one, then this one. So the idea behind this is that this execute at test level, right? So if you want to run before each and after each, this will be linked to your test cases. And before your test cases and after your test cases, then you should use before and after. Again, just like I explained earlier, we need if we need to set up something, then we would be using the before. And if we need to tear down the same something setup, then we need to use the after. Now let's open the Visual Studio Code and see a real time example here and see how these hooks work. In Visual Studio Code, now let's create one js file here so let me create a file new file and i am naming it as let me create it again new file i'm naming it as hooks.js and as we know that we, now we need to use the hooks and before we start writing a code here just let's go to the browser and see what exactly we want to achieve here so let me go to the browser here and this is a source demo website and here the first thing you need to do is that you need to log in using the provided usernames and password and then you will go to the application so this is a standard password and username so let me copy this one from here and paste it here and let me paste this one from here and now this is a password we need to copy then we need to paste it here and press login. So after login, it's a sort of a you know e-commerce website where you can purchase something, and here you have a different items available or different products available. Okay, and then after 
purchasing something or viewing something then we need to log out from here right and if we focus here in the real time scenario what should we be doing in exactly so usually what happens is that we need to log in first right then we need to execute our test one then we need to log out then again we need to log in now this is we are logging into the second time then execute test two then again log out so this is something which is one of the very valid scenarios which needs to be executed in the automation so how this will be achieved so what will we do here is that and before logging into the application the first thing is that we need to go to this website right and we know that this needs to be executed once only right so now let me go to here and what i'll do is that steps and step is that so before we know that it will execute once so in before what i'll do is that i will open the website okay then before you know that before each test i need to log in and after each test i need to log out so that's really simple so what i'll do is that i will be using before each for login right and then i will write test one test two then i will be writing after each because after each test i need to log out so i will be writing some code here then at the end i think there's no need uh, in this particular so scenario we don't have any kind of something which we need to tear down or close something so we will not using any after here but if there is some kind of setup we used for the before then we definitely need to use this after okay so let me go back to the studio code here and we know that we for intelligence we need to use this right copy this one go here paste it here and let me copy some lines of code here like describe and here obviously we need some of these things here okay let me copy the whole code from here and we will modify this one so let's go here and paste it here and here describe as we know it it is basically a test rule so i am naming it as a smoke test and now it i know that it will be my test cases right so i am whatever the test case i need to write i will be writing here in this section okay and as we discussed as that we don't need visit in the test section copy this one and now here what we need to do we need to use before each after each in a outside the test cases okay if we talk uh, technically about before and these before each because these are in technically in technical terms these are functions so before and it's a function here and we need to use the function keyword and this function keyword is basically used here right and inside the body of this before here i need to place the ui because i need to execute this thing once only and after that as per our scenario i need to log in test one log out then test then again log in test two and log out so this is what we need to do now this is in the 
before right and as per our scenario login should be inside the before each okay and now go here and before the test let me go here and use this before before each and again this is a function so we'll be using a function and here is the body right so here we need to provide the details of login right uh, if i go here into the website so we need to identify this field okay i need to identify this field and then i need to provide username password and click so these three steps i need to be a part of this before each okay so let's inspect here and it's a username so i will be using the selectors hub here and so this is particular username here let's copy this one and let's go back to the visual studio code here and here what we usually do is that is cy dot get and inside the get we need to provide this particular selector then what we need to do we need to type here and what we need to type we need to provide a username and if we go here so this is a username let's copy it from here go back to the visual studio code here and we are good to go in a similar way cy dot get and let me copy the complete line because it's pretty much similar here and let me paste it here and uh, now go back here inspect the password field we have this unique css selector copy this one go back to the video studio code here and now the third thing is that is cy dot get now we need to click on the login button okay and uh, now go back again here let's find the selector here so this have this unique css selector copy this one go back to the visual studio code and provide this one now over before each is ready and now we need to write two test cases then we would be writing after each in this one okay so first test uh, let's go back here and log it into the application let me copy this one and paste this one and let's copy this one paste this one and log in into the application so assume that my test case is that this link should work for example let me click on this one okay so now again uh, we would be using the selector here and now this one this one and we have this selector here copy this one now go back to the visual studio code i'm naming it as for example validate link and inside the test what i need to do cy dot get and then i need to provide the selector here and then click assume that this is our test and this is our test one now we are done with our test one here let's write test two here okay so copy this one and paste it here and now go back here and assume that we need to click on this add to cart button okay so click on this one so we have this this one copy this one from here and let me type it here and copy this whole one from here and let's paste it we're already done that this let's copy this one and provide the 
select here cool now and here when date add to card now we have done with this thing and we know that now we need to write after each so we need to write in a very similar way and after each what i do so i'll do that after each and again this is a function uh, here it's a it's, it's a body of now after each go back to the website here first we need to click on this button okay and it has a unique selector copy this one go back here cy dot get and here we need to provide the selector and we need to click on this after clicking on this what we need to do we need to click on the logout button so let's go back here and click on this one now inspect this logout so we have this logout click on this one and here again cy dot get and here we need to provide the locator and again what we need to do is that we need to click on this one now let's uh, go through the script here we have done before here where we are visiting the website so one thing we need to do is that we also need to change the url so let me copy this one which i forgot earlier and this is this is uh, you know this is why we need to review our script now we have this url then uh, before each it will go to the login field it will provide the username password then click on login it will execute this line then this test then after this so we are good to go with this one so let me save this one and now here we have this hooks here so let's click on see what happens so it should start execution and here it will you see and username and password do not match any user in the service so we have some problem with the password here and oops i guess we used the wrong password here and if i go here yeah we have actually used the same user as a password now let's save this one and see what happens so it will log in execute the test one then test two it really executed really fast let me rerun for you first test log out second test log out and here if, if i click on these tests so i have these two tests and let's see this one so click on the first test first it visited this website before all because we need to run it before everything right then before each it was doing the username password then log in then click then after this one then we have this particular test which we clicked on this particular url then after this test we need to log out and this is how these steps are performed and if i open the second test the similar thing will be observed here so that's that's the power of the hooks and that's all about the, the hooks and you should use the hooks and many of the scenarios will be covered using these hooks in the cypress automation thank you so much for watching this tutorial if you like our content then do like comment share and subscribe our channel once again thank you so much and see you in the next tutorial